now here we are with our uh, the co-director of Fans for Christ, uh, Chris Byrne is here with us, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So, Chris, thank you so much for uh, thank you, Rick. Coming over. Absolutely, I appreciate you having us. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> tell me a little bit. Um, I guess did I uh, describe Dragon Con? Yes, it, uh, <laughs> kind of geek Nirvana, geek <laughs> heaven, something like that. But it's a pretty good description. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, now, tell us a little bit about you, real quick, because uh, on the site you're actually a veterinarian. Yes. Right. Um, and you're a minister. I am as well. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, that kind of sums it up right there. <laughs> um, I uh, um, am a Christian, um, born again. I uh, practice veterinary medicine on a day-to-day -day basis. I got involved with Fans for Christ about eight years ago uh, and uh, found a passion for it uh, to the point that I ended up helping to run a lot of things, organize a lot of things, and eventually became the co-director for the group. Um, I am a real person. I have a wife. I have kids. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, a lot of people sometimes get surprised. They see these crazy costumes or they make go to the parade. Uh, and yes, you, I mean, you saw me in some costumes yeah. uh, and they're kind of crazy. But underneath it all, we're real people. You know, I have a life and a family outside of that. But our whole family participates in this, too. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I had, uh, in fact, I had a lot of fun when I went. And to be quite honest, I was kind of disappointed that I wasn't wearing a costume <laughs> either. Um, because there was so much camaraderie there and just as I said everybody's just there to have a good time yes. and just enjoy themselves um, now I love something though that you wrote on your um, blog that I definitely want to share because there is this weird line between you know because uh, many Christians or you know will look at that very down putting mm -hmm. you know and, um, and and there are some questionable things uh, ab there as well but uh, I love what you put here of uh, the average churchgoer doesn't know what to make of us uh, because we don't look dress or act like traditional Christians yet the average geek doesn't know what to make of us because we don't always act or talk like traditional nerds we're a minority in a minority but we're also proud to be so exactly so, uh, tell me about uh, Fans for Christ, and how did it get started exactly? Well, it was started by a guy named Steve Weiss. Mm -hmm. About nine years ago, he was on some uh, anime boards on the internet and was realizing that there really wasn't a, uh, a Christian presence out there. There was a lot of these people that had um, really bad impressions of Christians, but he also realized, wait a minute, there's got to be other people like me out there. Yeah. Uh, so he actually put an advertisement in the program at Dragon Con, a full-page ad uh, in the program that everyone gets, and the following year, got a table. Um, Dragon Con and a lot of other cons provide tables for free for various fans groups. And uh, that's how we found them. And, and me and my wife were attending for other reasons. And we walk up and there's a Fans for Christ banner. And we're like, first of all, wait, uh, are they making fun of us as Christians? <laughs> and then we walk up and start talking to them. And we're like, oh my gosh, we're not the only ones. Uh, and uh -huh. every year we get someone coming up and saying, I thought I was the only one here. And over the years, it has really grown. Um, for six years now, we have marched in the Saturday morning Dragon Con parade with our Fans for uh -huh. Christ banner very proudly. For six years, we have had a church service at Dragon Con that started off with about 50 people. This past year, we had 157 people in the service. Yeah. And it's grown every single year. We have gotten the respect of a lot of people there. We touch people in ways that your traditional, um, you know, Christian ministers uh, really don't. And it's not to say that they're doing a bad thing, but we relate. You know, uh, think about it in sports terms. You know, a lot of people are really into football. I'm not a sports guy. So, yeah. you know, you can maybe go up to someone if you're really into football and you're wearing your, uh, you know, Falcons jersey um, or something like that and you're talking to them about the quarterback and use the analogies, that's going to be lost on me. It's going to be lost on the others. Well, you know, you, you say something right there that's really interesting parallel because... Um, yeah, Christians are fans of different things as yeah. well, you know, and you've, you know, why can't you be a Christian and fans of comic books or fans of Star Trek and exactly. sci-fi movies? And you got a Christian who's, let's say, a Falcon fan and football, and for them to paint their face and wear the jersey and go out, you don't think anything weird of that. Right. 
And then, yet, if you're going to dress up as a stormtrooper and go on march at the Dragon Con Parade, all of a sudden, you're outcasted by the church. Right. When, when it comes to the level of fandom, it's, it's the same thing. It really is. And we found it very amusing sometimes when we'll see these people, because there's a lot of Labor Day weekend, there's a lot of football games around. Yeah. We'll see these people in the face paint with the jerseys and with their footballs and everything that are pointing and laughing at the people dressed up like Superman or stormtroopers or something yeah. like that. And we're like, have you looked in a mirror? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, and, and that's kind of one of our purposes. Um, we want to reach out to churches, traditional yeah. churches, and show them, look, there is a mission field here. Yeah. Um, th- we're not that weird. We just like different things. And to kind of help the churches understand uh, that there can be a light of Christ in this place. We want to reach out to the people there, the geeks and the nerds and the yeah. cosplayers and everything, that may have been hurt and condemned by churches yeah. and say, look, God loves you. Yeah. Christ is there for you, and we want to present that. And then we want to have a, a, a home for Christian geeks that they can fellowship with others that get all about themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, they may not be able to share their geekhood with their church friends. They may be, be able to share share their Christianity with some of their geek friends, yeah. but they can find a community that understands and gets everything about them. Which, that I think is what, what drew me right there, is because you, I did notice outside at the parade Saturday morning, there was mm-hmm. a, a religious presence, let's say, who yeah. was kind of boycotting or saying, you know, repent and all this and, and all these things. And even as a Christian, that didn't draw me to them. Right. But then I'm walking through the floor of the convention and I find your postcard on the table that says a, a church at Con. And yeah. right away, it's like, a church at Con, really? And, and then I go there and I was just amazed at all the genuineness that was going mm-hmm. on there. And, and I got to say, real quick, for your end, is personally, when I was Saturday night thinking, I thought, I've got to go to this. I've got to check it out. I think it's you know, really interesting, but I'm sure it's going to be some sort of fluff piece, motivation kind of thing, you know, very generic religious Mm -hmm. kind of service. And it wasn't. Um, Honestly, it was one of the best messages I've heard in a long time. I really enjoyed your your message. And and then sitting around and and worshiping particularly, right? Uh, You know, we're doing songs and here was volunteers who were coming in, bringing their instruments. And so it wasn't perfect pitch. And, you know, they were still trying to figure out the sound system Mm -hmm. as they were plugging in. But there was this genuineness and everybody wanted to be there. And everybody was truly worshiping. And I told you uh, right before we started is that that was the highlight of my experience is because we're there, we're worshiping all together. But then there's this surreal moment of I look around and I've got Darth Vader and Gandalf <laughs> over here worshiping and, you know, some other characters. You've, and, you've got people leading service in pink and purple yes, hair. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, but there was this genuineness of we're all together worshiping God and we're just this this fan base, and even though we're a fan base of comic book and sci-fi, we're all here to to worship. And, and that's really a large part yeah. of what we're about. You know, yeah. we are Christians, and one of the things I love about our group is we are not a particular denomination, we're not a particular yeah. church, and we embrace the body of Christ, and when you look around, you don't know, okay, what church do they go to? Are they Baptist? Are they Methodist? Are they Catholic? Yeah. And, and God doesn't look at that either, but we are all one body worshiping with one purpose. And I, I think that's the beauty of what Christianity can be. Exactly. So let me uh, take you to this clip right now um, of that moment exactly of when we were worshiping. And I hope with that kind of backstory, you'll see what I kind of experienced. Take a look.
as I said, that that was genuinely the highlight of my experience there. I, I want to ask you, how do you, um, what's the response you get though from uh, from Christians who who don't understand or say, hey, this can't be of God? <laughs> you know it. It, it can be a bit of a challenge, and that's what we try to reach out to. Surprisingly, um, there are a lot of people that understand this, that get this as a mission field, even if they don't relate to it. Yeah. Um, up in Bartow County, we have a monthly pastor's prayer meeting where all the, a lot of pastors in the area get together. They know about it. Uh -huh. um, in fact, we just had it this morning, and uh, some of the leaders of the group were asking me, so how did Dragon Con go? Uh, and my wife is in a women's Bible study and was telling them right before we left and they were going to pray and they found they had never heard of something like Fans for Christ and they found it very interesting. Now, you're going to have people that condemn what we do and condemn all of those people. Probably the most famous is Westboro Baptist Church that goes to uh, a lot of cons. They do other things. And they protest these things. Um, we're going to let God kind of work with them. It's not our duty yeah. to judge them and everything. Yeah. Um, what we want to do is we want to show the love that Christ has in that Christianity and, you know, to educate people. A lot of people have never thought about it. Like, you know, you were saying, you know, don't think about stormtroopers and Darth Vader and Gandalf worshiping. Uh, and so they've just never been exposed to it. So it's yeah. an opportunity for us to show uh, a different side of Christianity and a different side of people than most people are exposed to. Yeah. And, and I'm excited over how much do you affect those who are there, who are seeking or, or not, or, you know, pick up your card out of curiosity and say, well, this is, a, let's check it out. We don't have anything going on Sunday morning. And, um, it happens. Yeah. And, and you actually had the, the pleasure this year, y'all were actually in the convention center. Right. You know, you've always had a table uh, there on the floor, but you've, but your church service has always been kind of outside. Right. With the exception of this year. Right. Right. And. You tell us. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's, there's a few things to kind of point out there. Um, first of all, we do reach a lot of people. Uh, one of our members told us about someone that he was talking to like Saturday. And they're like, well, you know, I've been out of church for a while. I, I haven't really gone. They came to the Sunday morning service. You know, we're reaching out to people like that. Um, a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year, we had someone come up to our table and say, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. But I've seen you guys here year after year. And I have to say, I really admire what you're doing and how you're doing it, keep it up. Now, wow. maybe a seed was planted there, something yeah. that God can water. We have those kind of things. This year, for the first year, we had one of the senior program directors say, We're not, you're not officially part of the con, we can't put you on our literature, but because of how you've been conducting yourself, we're not using this room, as long as you're out by a certain time, we'll let you have the room. That is huge, yeah. and it shows the witness that we've been having and how we've conducted ourselves that even though we're not officially part of it, for the first time in the six years we've been doing this, they let us have one of the rooms. Yeah, that, so. is, that is incredible. Um, now, we haven't, I've got to show the pictures, though, that, that we got here as well. Um, this is actually of the, the table that we're talking mm -hmm. about. There's the booth, and now it's kind of... Uh, you can't tell it by the picture, but you are on the main floor right here. I mean, everybody walking through is going to walk by this. Well, table. most people. Yeah. Um, we uh, the last several years we've been set up right outside of the art show, and they have comic book artists, they have professional artists mm -hmm. that are there, and we're right so outside of those doors. Um, this year we were right where a lot of the smaller bands and musicians will play. Yeah. So we're in a major area of the convention, and there's other fan tables there also yeah. promoting Star Wars, Stargate, yeah. other cons, things yeah. like that. Lord of the Rings, um, but we're right in the middle of all of that. Now, here's probably a family photo that I'm sure many of you do not have. <laughs> uh, now, I am a child of the 80s, so mm -hmm. I know exactly who you are. Of course, there's a twist to it. Yes. Why don't you explain real quick? Um, this is a steampunk Thundercats. <laughs> um, I'm of the 80s also. Uh, there's a new Thunder, a Thundercats cartoon on, and my son was like, hey, let's do Thundercats. Uh, and that's my wife and my two kids there also, and the fans are Christ table in the back. Um, a lot of people may not have heard of steampunk, which is a sort of a subculture within the geek culture, which is very Victorian, very H.G. Wells, Jules Verne. 
burn. So uh, my wife actually, she has her own costume business, Touch Magic Costumes. She made those costumes. I made the props. And so, yeah, we go there and we can relate to these people we're talking to. We're not just going there as Christians and as a church group. We're going as geeks and nerds ourselves. Yeah. And that, uh, kind of what you're getting to with people at the parade staying out with the signs, I bet I can guarantee you we talk to more people and uh, interact with more people in a few hours than they do in an entire weekend yeah. because we're one of them. We yeah. can talk to them on a level, not, not to downgrade what people are doing. And I do believe without Christ, unfortunately, you are going to end up in hell. We do yeah. have those convictions and those beliefs. But we can relate to people in a different way. And that connection allows us to talk to people that other churchgoers may not be yeah. able to. Yeah. I do want to show the rest real quick. Uh, now, these costumes there, I mean, they're not just run-of-the-mill. Your wife does a fantastic job. Of course, that's a close-up shot mm -hmm. with you. And then uh, then there's, of course, uh, there's that's my son, Lucas. Son, yeah. yeah. All right. And, and yeah, these, my daughter, yeah. Elena. And, and yeah, if anyone who hasn't been, you'll see that, yeah, people spend a lot on this. Now, there you are, not as the Thundercats, of no, course. This, this is from the TV show Once Upon a Time that's uh, okay. showing on uh, network TV nowadays. And we like that fairy tale aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and we do it as a whole family. I, and I, I think that's one. And I noticed that walking through the, the convention is that there was a lot of families mm -hmm. yeah, doing that exact same thing. Now, there you are uh, with your wife. Now, yep. again... Those costumes are wonderful. Your wife does a fantastic job. Um, and so it is something that the whole family can yeah. enjoy. And going back to how I introduced it, you know, as kids, we always, you know, we oh, yeah. enjoy dressing up and playing pretend. It's what kids do. And I imagine that those are memories that kids are going to walk away with that. Here's a chance that my parents join me our, our, in pretend. Our family participates in this as a whole, and it's a way that we can bond and stay together. Um, for those who don't know, the term for costuming like that is called cosplay. And yeah. we kind of joke around, the family that cosplays together stays together. <laughs> um, our kids think that people who don't go to cons and don't dress up, they're the weirdos. Because they're growing up in this. Um, at the same time, you know, I, I, I don't want to uh, uh, have any false impressions. There are things at Dragon Con yeah, that are yeah. not family friendly and things yeah. that Christians should not participate yeah. in. But we have that freedom. It's like turning on TV. There are shows we don't let our kids watch. Yeah, and there's yeah. things that we probably don't want to watch because of our beliefs. Yeah. And we have the choice to avoid those areas, avoid those channels. So it's the same thing. But there are things there. I mean, how many of us, when we started growing up, oh, we can't dress up like Green Lantern or Superman anymore? We get to. Yeah. And, that, and that's fun for us. It, it's that retaining that part of that yeah. childhood that we enjoy. Yeah. Now, you know, I appreciate you bringing up that there, there are things there that are questionable there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are, you know, some interesting characters there that yes, probably there are. do not, uh, are not family friendly. Exactly. Um, and, but at the same time, talking about you being one of them, what a great ministry, though, to be a light right there inside exactly. this atmosphere. I mean, you know? we, we look at it as, where would Christ be? You know, yeah. he even said himself, the, uh, he, the doctor didn't come for the well, he came for the sick. And, and Jesus, yeah. in his ministry, he went where the sinners were, where the prostitutes yeah. were, where the tax collectors were. So where would he be? Jesus would not be standing in the pulpits in your average church. Yeah. He would be down, you know, for some people, ministering to the homeless. He would be at places like Dragon Con. And we see ourselves, there is darkness there. Yeah. We see ourselves as that light in the darkness, and we have seen that light growing yeah. by how many people, we have in our group now, by how many people come to the church service, by what non-Christians say about how we're conducting ourselves. Yeah. So we are that light for Christ in, in a place like that. I think that's awesome. And now, I do want to at least mention for if you want to learn more, particularly the story of, of the founder and my God, he does have an incredible book. Check it out. Um, God Loves the Freaks uh, by Stephen Weiss. Um, so recommend that. And you can also check out their website which is fansforchrist.org Dot org, right? correct. And we're on Facebook Facebook and YouTube. You can yeah. actually see a lot of our services on YouTube. In fact, we're, we haven't done it yet. We're going to put up this year's service on YouTube also. Oh, wonderful. So look for Fans for Christ on YouTube wonderful. and you can find a lot of our previous gatherings. Definitely check that out. And i, I got to say also on a personal note, please uh, promote yourself at your blog because I did love the blog. <laughs> uh, yes, it's uh, blogspot.christianninja.com <laughs> um, and that's based off of a sermon I did at a con up in Chattanooga called Conuga a few oh. years ago um, uh, about Christians being ninjas and pirates. So we're ninjas. Yes. <laughs>
And, and I'm going to leave it at that. I want you to go check out the website to figure out the exact backstory of that. Because it's really good. It's a very great spiritual parallel and hook to it. But as I said, I want you to go check it out. Um, so, Chris, thank you so much. Thank you, Rick. I really appreciate having you more. And now, uh, real quick, I do want to, those are the two cons that y'all are really involved with there. Do y'all have those plans are main to go ones. more? Oh, yes. Um, we uh, have gone to Con Carolinas in Charlotte for a few years. Right now, we are looking at spreading our ministry throughout other places. Yeah. Steve's going to try to do it out on the West Coast. We've got plans to go to Florida, up to the Northwest, uh, Northeast. Um, we really want to spread this as a ministry, and that's how we see it. So, yeah, yeah we're hoping to get all over the country. Good. And, and obviously, ministry is going, is going to need support. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, definitely check out more about them. And Chris, once again, I just thank you so much for your thank ministry you, and thank you for stopping and sharing.